Welcome to the Topaz Plus Digital Chest Drainage System product demonstration video. In this video, we will go through the system setup, starting therapy, therapy management, alarm management, and therapy discontinuation. Topaz Plus Digital Chest Drainage System is indicated for use on all chest tubes. It's a 2.2 pound device when dry and is battery operated with a battery life of about 10 to 14 hours on a modern air leak. Topaz Plus is typically stored in a centralized location on a docking station so that it is fully powered when in need for any discipline throughout the hospital. When Topaz is in use, it is recommended that the Topaz be plugged in using a power adapter while the patient is bedside and the power adapter is inserted into the port on the right side of the device, the mains power port. The device also comes equipped with a, car a bed rail holder that pops out of the handle as such and also two clips that are rotated out from the back of the device that can be utilized using a rail adapter on an IV pole, a bed rail, or walker. In addition, there's also a carrying strap that can be situated right underneath the carrying handle and placed over a patient's shoulder for easy ambulation. Topaz Plus has two main disposable components, the tubing and the canister. The tubing comes in three separate sizes and in each side comes with a single and a double connector configuration. The three sizes will compensate for a 12 to 20 French chest tube, a 20 to 32 French chest tube, or a 32 to 40 French chest tube. The three canister sizes are a 300 milliliter canister, an 800 milliliter canister, or a two liter canister. To assemble the Topaz Plus, take your tubing, which comes in a double sterile package. You're gonna open it from one end and remove the inside sterile package. It's important that you maintain the sterility of the patient end of the tubing until after you complete a successful functional check. You're gonna remove the topaz end of the tubing, keeping the patient end in the sterile package. If you're in the operating room assembling the device, you'd wanna dump this entire package onto the sterile field and this hand end would be passed out to the circulating nurse. You'll take the tubing up, little end in, slides into this port as shown, and you wanna slide it in without forcing it so that it remains flush with the device. You also want to visually identify and make sure that orange ceiling ring is present. This is the vacuum port and without the ceiling ring there won't be a good seal and therefore the device will not work properly. The canister comes in a sterile environment as well, but it's not necessary that you maintain the ster sterility of this component. Just simply open the, open, the, open the package and slide the feet into these valleys and then just Rock it and lock it into place. To power on the Topaz Plus device, simply press the top right button on the top of the device and it'll power on the device. This does not start therapy, this is simply powering on the device. It's gonna go through an internal diagnostic check. Once the diagnostic check is complete, it takes you to this screen, which is asking, is this a new patient? Yes or no? If this is a new patient, new to Topaz Plus Therapy, you press the right arrow, which is yes. And it takes you to a functional check. This functional check is simply stating that you want to sterilely occlude the end of the Topaz tubing, the patient end, until the functional check is complete. So with the st sterile end of the tubing funk, sterilely occluded, we'll hit OK, and it'll take us through the functional check. This typically takes about 12 seconds, and hopefully it says test passed. If it says test failed, you'd want to reassemble the device 
and redo the functional check. Also ensure that you're occluding, starly occluding the end of the tubing for the entire duration of the functional check. Test passed. Now that we've successfully passed the functional check, we can take the patient end of the Topaz tubing out of the sterile environment and insert it into the patient's chest tube. Now the Topaz device is successfully hooked up to the patient's chest tube, and now we can look to begin therapy. The bottom right arrow on this home screen is the on button. That's the button you'd press to start therapy. The bottom left button is the menu button, which will take you to the administrative function of the device. Pressing the on button starts therapy, as aforementioned, and you will see on the left side of the, the screen that the air leak is now increasing, and the right side of the screen is your output measurements. I'm occluding the end of the tubing for demonstration purposes so that the system can remain closed and you can see that the air leak numbers are, are dropping. On this screen, you will see the top left is a battery indicator. This is the Topaz in or out of access symbol. It's important that you keep the Topaz within 10 degrees of upright because it is measuring output digitally as well. This is your patient identification number, your therapy number. This is the therapy hours, and this is showing you that the therapy is in, in motion, in progress. That will also be standby if you put the device in standby by holding the standby button for three seconds. Now that there is no therapy in progress, and you see that the device is in standby. To re restart therapy, just press the on button. The bottom center of the device shows that this patient's therapy is at negative 20 centimeters of water. To change that number, simply press the lateral arrow simultaneously. It highlights the pressure, and you can use the up and down arrows to get to the ordered pressure, or if the order pressure is negative eight or water seal, just press physio, takes you right to negative eight. Regardless of the pressure that you go to, it's important to press okay to lock in that pressure. Otherwise, it will revert back to the previous pressure. Let's review the air leak status, accuracy, and graphs. The air leak status can be viewed on the left side of the screen as aforementioned. This is your air leak number calculated in milliliters per minute. The up and down arrows when on the therapy in progress screen or the home screen can be pressed to access graphical data. The up arrow takes you through your air leak graphs, one of four pages. The next arrow takes you through each page, 24, a 72 hour auto scale graph, a 24 hour graph, a zoomed in 24 hour graph, and finally your catheter patency check which is only active when the air leak is at zero. You wanna see alternating up and down arrows. If you don't see the alternating up and down arrows, have the patient sit up and take a couple, two or three deep breaths, and you should see those up and down arrows. That's the patient's titling. If you don't see them, assess the chest tube as if you would on any type of chest drainage management device. To return to the home screen, simply press home, the down arrow takes you through three output graphs. The first is a 72 hour linear auto scale graph. The second is a 24 hour bar graph. And the third is a six hour bar graph. To change a canister, simply place the device in standby by holding the standby button for three seconds. You'll see in the upper right hand corner that the device has gone from in therapy to in standby. At that point, you wanna take the clamp on the tube, slide it all the way down to the device and clamp the tube. Once the clamp is securely on the tube, hit the big blue button and the canister will be removed. On the canister, there are pull tabs that can be pulled off to occlude these two holes. This is good for infect infection control purposes so that no fluid leaks out when it's disposed. Simply red bag this canister, grab a new canister, feet first, rock it, lock it into place, 
press on to continue with therapy and make sure that you unclamp that tubing. If for some reason you forgot to unclamp the tube or the self-test failed or there's a leak in the system, the canister's full, the battery's low, the tubing's clogged, the filter's clogged, there's a fluid alarm if that's activated or a standby for too long of a period of time, an alarm will be triggered. The alarm sounds like this. I have just created a filter clogged alarm. To, act, to remedy a, uh, an alarm, simply follow the instructions on the screen. With your up and down buttons pressed simultaneously, you will see that it will mute the alarm. Then follow the instructions. One, clamp the two. Two, replace the canister. Big blue button, canister pops off, grab a new canister. Replace the canister, continue with on, and unclamp the tube. Whenever, whenever you remedy an alarm, it's gonna go through a diagnostic check to ensure that everything's good to go with the device. And then it's gonna confirm if you completed the last step in the order of operations for remedying that specific alarm. In this case, have you unclamped the tube and your response will be okay. Once the patient's air leak is resolved and the output and air leak measurements are within the parameters of the protocol of the surgeon or the physician making the orders to pull a chest tube, it's time to discontinue therapy. To do that, first you can check the catheter patency by hitting the up arrow and going to the fourth page by hitting next three times to the catheter patency check and ensure that the catheter is actually patent, that there's not an occlusion in the chest tube. Once you see those up and down alternating arrows, you return to the home screen and hold that standby button down for three seconds. This will put the device in standby, as you can see in the upper right hand corner. At this point, you'll clamp the chest tube, remove the chest tube from the patient, disconnect the canister and tubing and discard in the red bag and press the power button while in standby to turn the, to power the device off. Once the device is powered down, make sure the device is comprehensively wiped down with a disinfectant wipe. And once it's disinfected and cleaned, return to the staging area for recharging, reprocessing, and uh, to be available for the next patient. Also, make sure that the rail adapter and power adapter are placed back where they belong for use with the next patient as well. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any further questions, please reach out to Medela directly at 877-735-1626. Thank you.